Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. So today I want to talk about one use case, which is how we can pass trigger payload outputs in the autonomous agent to prompt tool in Copilot Studio. This was one of the use cases I had recently and I had some challenge because there are some um, uh, simple use cases, for example, uh, having an uh, autonomous agent that processing incoming emails, drafting uh, answer, looking at the novel sources we have and replying back to the user. But this use case was a little different. So basically, whenever a user submits a request, the agent would take those request details pass it to AI Builder Prompt Tool to process it further, and then store those information in another table. So luckily I was able to uh, figure this out and a huge thanks to PowerCat team for helping me to figure this out. So here is the agent, as you can see, I have simple description. I turned on the orchestration. Uh, this is actually the step one. If you build the generative uh, autonomous agents, uh, this needs to be toggled on. And the default model is GPT-40. And instructions, I keep it lightweight because I have only two actions here. So, uh, but if you want, you can add more instructions. Uh, one thing that I would recommend, anyway, anytime you add instructions to make, uh, you should make sure that there is no conflict with the tool description or tool instructions or knowledge instructions that can um, lead the bad results. And also I have one tool, again, like once the AI agent uh, processes those requests, it stores uh, those information in another table, Dataverse table using this tool. And I have a trigger here. So uh, if you look at the settings here, Use generative AI orchestration for your agent's response. This is uh, turned on. So this is also very important. And I also turned off uh, use general knowledge and use information from the web. So back to overview tab. Now, if I go ahead and trigger my agent. So what we will see, the agent triggered and the trigger outputs, you can see uh, these are the details. I added some um, message note here to see the uh, outputs here as well, the AI generated outputs. But what we see, the agent was successful or passed those trigger uh, payload outputs to this custom uh, topic. And the, inside the custom topic, I have prompt tool to process them and then uh, use process request tool to store them in another table. So when it comes to tables, I have one table here for let's say end users to submit their request. I have one, another table lists all the legal request categories. This is all fictional, of course, and you can have more categories, but you should also have descriptions since this will be helping our AI agent to decide the right classification. And I have another table, uh, basically whenever the process outcomes are done, the agent uses one tool to store them in this um, specific table. Um, if you look at here, so I have two uh, steps. Step one is basically classified upcoming requests by triggering the specific topic and then use this specific tool to save the results. As a good, as a good practice, uh, in your case, I would add also one way of notifying team that can be Outlook, that can be team, so that pe uh, team members can know, okay, we have a new process request. So let's go ahead and look at the uh, trigger action. So I'll cancel and then open Edit in Power Automate. So what we see here, we have uh, trigger actions when arrow is added, in, uh, is added, modified or deleted. And these are the details. But between uh, when a row is added, modified, or deleted, 
and sends a prompt to the specified code part for processing, I added a compose action because Dataverse tables typically comes with uh, uh, pre-built columns. So I don't want to uh, use them in our agent. Uh, if I don't limit this to certain uh, columns that I need, it will send all the columns to agents, which is unnecessary and that can have impact on the agent's process. So this is the uh, trigger part. And then I have these one topic. And this is very important because this is how we're going to pass those trigger payload inside Prompto. And the, this topic called prompt classification. And if you look at the trigger, this, uh, this, agent, this agent chooses. So, and I have this topic is triggered when the agent triggered autonomous description. But I added a topic level input. So I'm saying this is the variable name and dynamically feel with, uh, feel with the best option. So the agent sends those inputs dynamically to this specific topic. And then I have some description here. And then I added a prompt tool and added that topic level variable as an input to our agent. So let's add our prompt. So if we look at the details of our prompt tool, what we see, takes a little bit time, but should be able to see the details soon. Typically, it's very fast. I don't know why it takes so long. All right, so here we are um, as a model. Oh, not, I didn't want to test it, but. So as a model, I am using uh, GPT-5 chat. Um, for some reason, I don't see GPT-4 all here, and these are the new models. So. Instructions, very important, and I'm adding that on the top. I'm saying you are an AI assistant responsible for processing incoming. And this is my input variable. I decided I added requests and added some sample data by accurately categorizing them based on provided knowledge source. And in the instructions, I'm saying analyze the content of the incoming request carefully and classify them into one of these this is our this is the beta of this uh, prompt tool. Now we can use Dataverse as knowledge source. So I can say, look at those uh, incoming requests, then look at our knowledge sources, look for specific columns. In this case, I'm saying, look at the categories and matching based on the category description to determine the most appropriate category for the request then ensure the categorization is precise, precise and aligns with the definitions or criteria in the knowledge source. If the request doesn't clearly fit any category, call the category unknown and justification why. And here is the output format. Respond with a JSON object containing an original title, category, and so on. So we can see also knowledge used here. So once we test this, let me test one more time. And also output, I am using JSON because within this topic, I can actually add agentic flow and define those variables as well. So here you can see original title, category, confidence, description, and additional notes. And if you want, you can also customize your JSON. Like you can remove this and add a form of JSON format that you want. Let's go back here. But the other thing here is our knowledge used. So I can make this bigger. If you look at, in our table, we have, I believe, how many? Two, three, four, five examples. And the same thing here. We can see uh, divorce case, description, and the value. So, so whenever it, we have incoming requests, the prompt tool takes them looks at our um, 
knowledge source and categorize them accordingly and sends back those responses. So I will exit from here to see the uh, more details. Like you can see, this is beautiful. And this is the JSON response. And we can then save. I'll actually cancel. I didn't do anything. All right. So after that, I created a variable for outputs. And since this is record, there are we have more options here. So we are returning JSON and let's say record. And I added a message note here. And in the message note, we have this option. For example, let me show it to you. If I click insert variable, I can see here, this is the var prompt outputs. Now var prompt outputs, data used, finish reason, var prompt um, structured output, and this one, for example, var prompt outputs, structured output category, description, and so on. So that's basically allowing us uh, pass these uh, variables to agentic flow if you want to build it so but you don't have to do this this is just uh, i just wanted to show it to you and when i test i want to make sure that i can see some details the another important step here if we go to tools and leave so i have one tool here process request and i added a description this capture, this action captures the results of the prompt-based classification process for an incoming request. It stores the original request text, the assigned category, the model's confidence score, and explanation of the categorization decision, and any additional notes or ambiguous or special cases. So make sure you add comprehensive description in the tools because that's how LLM decides uh, when it can trigger certain tools. But besides that, let's look at the inputs. So for inputs, the environment, obviously that's custom value. I'm selecting my environment table name. That's also custom. For original title, I keep this dynamically filled with AI, but in the customize uh, section, I say original title, the exact text of the user's incoming request captured without modification. Then we have category and the same same thing, the label or classification assigned to the request like noise compliance service requests represented as a string and confidence score. That's also um, dynamically filled with AI confidence a numeric score between zero and one that indicates how certain the model is about the chosen category one equals very confident, zero equals not confident, and also justification. So I want to know what's the like reason behind the generated category. A short explanation that justifies why the request belongs to the assigned category based on context or keywords. And then completion, you can see here, outputs available to the agent and other roles. And in the details section, click additional details and I use ask the end user before running. I say no and credentials to use. I said maker provided credentials. So as you can see, I add really good details so that agent doesn't hallucinate or uh, let's say skip any uh, parts. One thing that I would, uh, I made actually one mistake. So I had one column in the process categories called description and I forgot that it should be a multi-line text. So when the agent generated the results, it couldn't save it because sometimes the results were uh, more than 100 characters and it didn't save it and stopped the action saying that I couldn't do it because your column has character limit. So it's very important when you build that uh, 
if there are description column, make sure it's a multi-line of text. Otherwise, it will break your agentic uh, flow. And this is, in a nutshell, how the uh, I could I was able to pass trigger payload uh, inside a topic and use it within uh, trigger uh, the prompt tool. The other thing I did, since this is uh, agentic. Uh, autonomous agent, I can use um, analytics tab and add KPIs here. So basically, I added savings, for example, I can just edit to show it to you and saving per run. So I'm saying here average time, like the whole process, I'm saying it would take one hour to complete by team member. And I'm saying like, let's say amount would be like $125 and it's in USD dollars. So that means that every time the agent would run, it would save $125. And imagine you have 10, 15, 20 requests in a single day. Every time this agent runs, this can save this month, this amount of money, which is really important, showing the business value that, it, that your agent generates. So this is how it works, and I hope this was insightful. If you have any questions, actually, if you want me to build this from scratch for you, let me know, and I can happily do it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.